מסכס בא ומציע, דלת עמוד א', דלת עמוד א', we're towards the end of the page in דלת עמוד א', line starts with ורב שישס עומר, very easy to find because the line starts with ורב שישס עומר, it's about 10 or so, more or less lines, bottom of the page, and we are discussing a concept, a concept called הילך, what's הילך? is a Halik concept. Basically, Halik means as follows. We know that if the person is moide b'miktas, meaning if somebody was accused, somebody was nitba to Beisdin, and his friend says, you owe me so-and-so money, $100, and the person said, no, I only owe you 50, 70, 25, only part of the sum, then he has to be nishba. He has to take a shvua to swear that the rest of the money he really doesn't owe, and the reason we have explained extensively before. However, when it's heilach, heilach meaning, if the person said to his friend, yes, I owe you 50 out of the 100 that you claim, and here they are, they're available for you, take them, then it's a mechloikas. Rav Chia, which we saw before, which we saw yesterday, Rav Chia says, you still have to take shvua. Meaning, Heilach is a regular mother. It's a regular mother. Please shut off your video. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Or I'll help you to do that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, sorry about that. And then we say another thing. Rav Soma. So Rav Chia says that Heilach is what? Heilach is a regular moide bemiktas. I don't care that the person already paid the part that he admits. So what? It's a moide b'miktas. And then we compared it to the Mishnah, which was hard to understand, but we're going to review it today anyways. And now we're going to talk about Rav Sheshes, who's Rav Chia's opponent. Rav Sheshes Omar, now we're starting the new stuff today. Rav Sheshes Omar, hey lach potu. If the nitba, the loive, the alleged loive said, hey lach, here you are, there you are, come take it. It's available for you right away. Then his daughter, he does not have to take Shavua. Why? My time. What's the reason? Says the Gemara. Came in the Omer Lehelach, Hani, Zuzi, the Kamoidi, the Gavayu, right? Since he told him, here are the Zuzim that I admit to, you claim I owe you 100? Well, the 50 that I admit to you are available to you. Keman denakit lehu malve dami, right? Which means it's as if the malve took them back. Even if the Malva didn't physically take the, the amount that he's for sure owed, that he's admitted, it's as if he took it because the lawyer says, listen, they're in my house, they're in my drawer. I did not yet use them. Let's say by Halvo, Milva so need to know. I didn't touch them. They're there for you. Don't get hysterical with me. Take the 50. It's as if he already took them. And as we said yesterday, it's as if they closed the case on those 50, ah, it's as if the case is closed now. There's a break between the two 50s. Continues the Gemara, regarding the other 50, he's not moide, right? The other 50 that he says are the other 50 that he claims uh, he is not owed, he is not admitting at all. Therefore, leka hedos mitzasataina. There is no hoidobe miktsas. There is no 50%. You know what we have here? We have 100% hoido. In other words, when he said, I owe you 50, and here they are, it's as if the case is closed, finished, done, because I already, as if I gave it to you, done, finished. The other 50, I'm completely koifer. I completely deny. And the 50, as I said yesterday, and I think it's Baruch Hashem, a good definition, the 50 became 100%. It's now as if it's a new court case with what? With 100% denial, aha. Which means we have one case of admitting everything and then you denied everything. That's not called Moedeb Miktas because between the Hoido and the Kfira, there was Ke'ilu giving back the money. In says of Sheshes, I don't view that as Moedeb Miktas. I view that as Moedeb Bakoil and then the other sum, Koifer Bakoil. Therefore, you don't take a shvua because somebody who's koifer bakol, somebody who denies the entire amount, does not have to take shvua. That is what Rav Sheshes believes. So let's review. Rav Chia says Heilach is a regular, a regular case of Moedah B'miktas. 
Rav Chia says, no. In other words, I don't care that he gave the money in the middle or made it available. Excuse me? No, Rav Chia, I, I was right. Rav Chia says, Eilach is a regular, um, is a regular mode of mixtas, so you have to take Shvua. And the fact that he said it's available, so what? He does not break the flow. It's still one case of 50-50. That's what Rav Chia says. Well, Rav Shesha says, no. I view that availability in the middle of and saying, go ahead and take it. Then in that case, Rav Shesha would say that you do not have to take Shavua because you admitted and you're done with it. And comes a new case of the Ilu, of then the other 50 that he denies and he denies them all. He denies them completely, each and every penny, each and every dime. And therefore that called Koifer Bakalin does, does not have to take Shavua. What does the Helach have to do with our sugya? Because we compared our Mishnah to Helach. And now we have to repeat that a little bit difficult point because the Gemara is now asking, let's continue the Gemara. Well, Rav Sheshes Kach Yomesnisim. According to Rav Sheshes, the Mishnah is difficult. Why is the Mishnah difficult? Let's look at the Mishnah with the eyes of Helach. What really happens in the Mishnah? Two people screaming at each, at each other, each one holding the talis for dear life, and each one saying what the talis really is all mine. However, let's focus now. The camera is now focusing on Reuven, okay? Says Reuven, mine, mine, mine. Reuven knows very well that the talis is half of the talis is held by the hands of Shimon, right? So even though he says mine, but Lamaisa, Shimon is holding half of it. So as the Ritva explained yesterday, it's like a person says, I don't owe you, but here you are. In other words, it's a forced Helach. Helach, as we'll see later, can sometimes be forced. In other words, Helach means it's a done deal. It's a finished story. That's what happens in our Mishnah. So in our Mishnah, what do we see? We see if you look at one side only, you have Helach, right? You have Reuven saying, yeah, I really, I, Shimon says it's all mine. And Reuven says, I'm moide hef, because really he doesn't say it, but that's what he thinks. That's what's uh, indicated. Well, half is in your hands, buddy, although I don't like it, but I have, and it's really, really in your hands. I admit, and it's in your hands already. Hey, look, it's by you. Here, here you are, okay? And half is by me. It, what did we say in the Mishnah? That you do have to take Shavua. Ay, 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 ay. You see that you do have to take Shavua. Mm, bad news. You're telling me you have to take Shavua? Rav Shesha says on Hey, look, you don't have to take Shavua, right? Rav Shesha says it's going for Bakol. So Rav Shesha is not good with our Mishnah. Our Mishnah, by the way, has a problem that it's a mutual Helach. But let's ignore that for now. But even if it was a Helach of, of one side, yeah, which according to Rav Shesha, you don't have to take Shavua, right? Then why does the Mishnah say you have to take Shavua? All the more so our Mishnah is double Helach. It's less of a reason to take Shavua because both sides already he agreed, they already gave it to each other. In our case, they both say in my mind. Yeah. It's a mutual halach. Each one is the tova and the nitva. Each one is both the, the, the plaintiff and the, and the accused in our Mishnah. And a chinami, that makes it even worse. Because as Taisva says, I didn't tell you that yesterday, mutual halach is not such good news because why do we have to take Shavuah Bechlau? We both gave it to the other side. <laughs> However, so it's really bad with Rav Shesha. Rav Shesha says halach does not require Shavuah. The Mishnah says you do. Uh, that's always a solution that comes out of the head. No, our mission is takonas chachomi, which means, as we said many times before, you always have two ways out to learn the shvu of the Mishnah. Either the shvu of the Mishnah is the oraisa, because of Moedu B'miktas, Heilach V'chulei, or you can say the Mishnah is a purely rabbonantic idea. The Mishnah and Chinami knows that you don't have to take shvu mi oraisa. It's not a classical case of not modem mixtas, it's not helach, not shmelach. Elamai, our Mishnah has an extra security code. How is that called? Shvua. What do I mean extra security code? People unfortunately can be very nasty and very greedy. And Chachomim knew that. Rabbi Yochanan is the one who established it. And he said, We want to avoid a jungle mentality here that people will say, you know, you see a guy coming out of the nice. Uh, fancy store from, you know, Leibovich with a nice suit, and he'll grab half and he'll say, it's mine, and he'll get half of it in Beisdin, and he'll get wary three times a week, <laughs> the other one another three times. So because of that, they made it to Konos Chachomim. So Sheshe says, leave me alone. I believe Heilach does not require Shavua, 
The Mishnah is a different story. It's a special local Takonas Chachomim. So if Sheshis is good, is out of the out of danger. I ve'idach. <laughs> what would Rav Chia say? Because Rav Chia did connect our Mishnah to Helach. Remember Rav Chia? Rav Chia says, look, Helach has to take Shvua, and the Mishnah is approved for me. Is that approved for you? No. It's just a Takonas Chachomim. Says the Mishnah in Takonas Chachomimi. It's true. Rav Chia says, I know the Mishnah is Takonas Chachomim. Listen carefully to a very interesting fundamental idea we're going to see now. Says Rav Chia, you're not scaring me. I know the Mishnah is just at the Kanas Chachomim so people don't grab and charge each other. Elamai, umi, however. Listen to this. If you tell me that Midoraisa Heilach Chayev, if you're telling me that Lu Yitzir, it was a one side story. Ellen, maybe that's what you meant. Lu Yitzir, let us imagine that to Beisdin you'd have a one side Heilach. That's what happened. One guy comes to Beisdin, okay? The other one does not have the talis in his hand. Reuben has it in his hands and Shimon doesn't. And then one of, Reuben says to Shimon, Shimon, liar, it's all mine. And Shimon says, and Shimon says, you know, half of it is yours and you take it. Yeah, let, you, you, I allow you now, yeah, I admit half and grab half of it and, and half he grabs to himself. It, you, yeah, in other words, let's say it was a one side halach, then, then en chinami, they would have to take shvua. Right? That, that's Rav Chia. You have to take Shvua. If Helach is Chayev, now that both of them hold it, continues the Gemara, metaknin Rabbonon Shvua ke'en de'oraisa. When they both hold it, there's no logical reason to make Shvua. Because they both hold it already. It's Chazok of both sides. Go home, split it with scissors and go home. However, no. If we have a Shvua de'oraisa of Helach, when Chachamim wants to establish their own shvua of what? Of shiloya kolecha toikef, that people don't attack each other. Chachamim usually don't like to just invent their own ideas. Chachamim like to build on the basis of the oraisa. Says Rav Chia like this, if I'm right and Helach in general requires shvua, here when you have a double Helach and Chachamim invented their own thing, they're building the second floor and top of the first floor the oraisa. The Torah says Helach is nishba, Chachomim make a variation on that theme, they develop it and they say, even when you have a double halach, here too, you take a shvua dorabonon. Ella continues the Gemara to show, to prove you the other side, the punchline. Iyamat midorai sehelach potul, but if you'd say that midorai sehelach would be potul, like you have sheishas, if you believe that if one guy says, go ahead and take half of it, then he would not have to take shvua, then mitak mi rabonon shvua delese de kabosa bideorai sa, rhetorical question. Would Rabbanon create a shvua, leisa kavosa, that there's no similar shvua in the Torah? Rabbanon don't invent completely, completely new ideas, you know that? Even whichever every mitzvah the Rabbanon, by the way, I'm going a little bit on a tangent here. I know it from, uh, from Megillah. The Meseches Megillah, if you learn it with the Meforshim, you see that Rabbanon never invent a completely new idea. Even Hanukkah, Purim, whatever you want to call them, they're all based on Torah ideas, yeah? Hanukkah, we have Yomim Tovim, Halal Haidah, they, they, they established uh, Hanukkah, for example, yeah? The Tila Sedaim is based on Mikveh. Get what I'm saying? Here too. I only, says Rav Chia, I only see Chachamim can invent this new idea, this whole new Shavua, which does not appear in the Torah, of, you know, take a Shavua, even though you're holding it in your hands. You still have to take Shavua. They can only establish it if it's similar to an existing Shavua, which is Helach. Then when there's a double Helach, Chachamim say here too, we, we invent, we, we establish a shvua. But going to Europe, Cheshes, Chachamim are building on thin air because there is no such shvua even similar to that. How can Chachamim just invent out of the blue a whole new shvua so people don't charge against each other? I mean, it's a nice concern, but why, how can you just invent that? That's what Rav Chia says. Rav Sheshes obviously was not concerned. Rav Sheshes believed that Chachamim can establish a new shvua, I guess, and he's okay with that. That's end of the beginning of, it's the, it's the end of the beginning I mean what I say, of Helach. I'm repeating Helach, and then we're going to the Mesevi. Yeah, don't turn the page so quickly. You okay? Yeah? I'm listening. We are in Dalet Domod Base almost. We are the very, very end of Dalet Domod Aleph. D-A. Yes, uh, I can stop the recording if you wish. Better. Let's review... Let's review Helach. Let's review Helach. Again, 
because we have to know it for the next uh, up, up and coming question, upcoming question. <coughs> Rav Chia says, if a person is, a, is, a, um, is nitba, is sued for $100, and he said 50, I admit, and here they are, take them, available for you, then what do we say? And Chinami, that is, according to Rav Chia, still remains a regular mode of a he has to take Shavu on the remainder, on the other 50. Rav Shesha says no. Rav Shesha says Helach is potul from Shavu. Why? Says Rav Shesha, when the 50 are available to the to the Tuvea, to the plaintiff, then that means that the court case was cut into two parts. He cuts it into two parts. There's a break, there's a dichotomy. The first part I'm done with. I moide, and here it is, finished. Done deal. Now the other 50, that's Koifer Bakol. I deny. And Koifer, I deny completely the entire other 50. A Koifer Bakoil, somebody who denies the entire story, what about him? He does not have to take Shavuah. That's our Cheshus view. Now we're going to ask a question on who? First on Rav Chia. Mesevi. We're going to ask questions on Rav Chia and then Rav Cheshus. Mesevi will want to challenge Rav Chia from a Braisa. Says a Braisa. Sloim Dinorin. Sloim Dinorin means like this. Sloim Dinorin. Sela is um, the most valuable coin in the time of the Gemara. Dinar is the second one. Slime Dinar means as follows. You can see Rashi, Rashi here. Shtar Shikosov Boy. There's a star and it's written in the star. Ploini Lova Mi Ploini Sloin. It says Reuven Bard from Shimon in a proper star. Let's assume the star is a good star with Kium of Bezin. It's a kosher star. And it says he barred from him Sloin. Dollars, shekels in plural. Veloy Pieresh Kama. He doesn't know how many. Doesn't say how much, doesn't say how much money. Dalad the base the top of the page. Dalad the base top of the page. Yeah? So the Sloim Dinorin, yeah, it says in the star, Reuven presents the star to Shimon. It says, you Shimon, oh Reuven, money. Money. <laughs> how much money? So it Dinorin, well, two, uh, I don't know, it's two, I don't know. But you owe him a certain amount of Dinorin, of coins. Okay? Now the question is how much? The star is a good star in the sense that it's it's uh, it's functional, it's written well, but the amount is not there. It's not that there's a missing line. It says you owe me dinorin, you owe me dollars, shekels, yeah. Doesn't doesn't say the amount, yeah. So now, before we continue, before we continue, I want to save you some work. I'll spoon feed you a little bit because this took you. It's okay to be spoon fed. When it says. Dinorin, we have a concept in the Torah which is very logical, miut rabim shnaim. If it says plural and we don't know how much the plural is, is it two or 587, we always assume the least. We play it safe and we assume if it says dinorin, or you see, if I say yesterday I saw anoshim, people, you assume I meant two people unless I, I mentioned the number five, 10, or 15 and a half. So now, if it says dinorin or sloim, the assumption, listen carefully, assumption, but not a sure assumption. It's an assumption that probably the amount that he owes him is only two, because we don't know more than that. Had it been a higher number, then Mr. Maldu would have written five or 10, right? He would have written. If all it says is dinorin, is stam, dinorin probably means two. We're not sure, but we assume it's two. And look what happens, of course, there's an argument. Uh, why did they do it? I don't know. Now, obviously, the ambiguity leads into an argument. Listen to this. Malve Oimer Chamesh. The Malve says, you know how much you owe me? Five. I did not specify, but I remember clear it was five, and I relied on your honesty. The Loive Oimer Shaloish. The Loive says three. Not two, but three. No, I don't owe you five. I only owe you three. That, to me, sounds a little bit like Moed of Amiktas, right? He claims five, and the other guy says three. Abshimer Melozo Oimer. Says Well, I learned in Cheder, Reuven says five, Shimon says three, life is beautiful, and therefore, you should swear the what? You say only three? Of course, three he has to give him. He didn't yet give it to him. And the other two, swear. You really want to tell me that there's no other two and you admit to on three? So be nishba that the other two you don't owe and let's go home and we stay good friends. That's Rabbi Shimon Lozo, the Tana. Rabbi Akiva Oimer, Eino Ela Kemeshiv Aveda Upotu. Says Rabbi Akiva like that. Rabbi Akiva says, no, the guy who admitted to three and could have admitted how much? 
No, you can't admit nothing because the star is Kilu saying two. That's a nothing he couldn't have. However, he could have said two. Say thank you that I admit to the third one. I could have just, you know, go along with the star. And the star is very likely, not 100%, but Rabbi Akiva is more of a believer that star means two and not more. Yeah, and therefore, I'm like returning your lost object. It's a form of Migu. Meshav Aveda is a cousin of Migu. It's similar to Migu. You know, it's not exactly the same. I'm not going to learn this now. But Lemaise, Chachamim established a person who's a Meshav Aveda, like I told you yesterday. Yeah, you lost Khalil your wallet with, uh, and somebody gives you back to you with 500 shekels, and you think there were 600. You don't take him to Beisdin, you know, be Nishba, where's the other 100 shekels? Say, thank you, gave you the Aveda. Because many people would have taken it home and enjoy uh, your credit card with uh, 10,000, yeah? So now his potter says Rabbi Akiva. Okay, so Rabbi Akiva sees there is a Migo here. Yeah, sort of. I could have said too. Rabbi Shemar Lazar does not see the Migo here. Why not? We're going to see soon. Yeah, allow me to continue and then we'll understand also Rabbi Shemar Lazar with Tani Mias. Now, let's, oh, Tani Mias, one thing we see for sure. Rabbi Shemar Lazar Oymer, Right? In other words, says Rabbi Shemalazo, it's a void of miktas. Void of miktas has to swear life is good. Time at the Omar, Sholosh. It's only because he said three that it's called void of miktas. Hashtayim, Potu. Let's say he would have said two. Let's say he would have said, I owe you two, and that would be good with a shtal. Then he does not have to take Shavua. Why not? Why doesn't he have to take Shavua on the other three? Let's say he would have admitted to two. Mashma, he does not have to take Shavua. Why? He's a Moed of Amiktas. He admits that there is two with a star. And by the way, by star, we'll see later, you don't even have to admit. The star proves against you that you owe two. No. So why don't, so that's Raglain Lodovo. If two, we know that you owe, maybe you owe more, right? That's all the Moed of Amiktas. There's, it doesn't say two, but it's indicating. It's very, very likely to, because the star says nothing and plural by nothing means two. People means two people. I, if he says two, why is he put two? You know why he's put two if he said two? Why? Smoke, there's fire. Something's going on here. Because shtar is heilach. Continue the Gemara. The high shtar, the kamoidi bay, heilach hu. Boom, boom, boom. Shtar is heilach. Why is shtar heilach? Heilach means that it's available for you right now. Says Rashi. Shtar, first of all, proves to me that you owe. Secondly, and that's very, very important to know because the Gemara doesn't say it, only Rashi. Says Rashi, we all know, what does Shtar connect you to? You know that the remote control connects you to the, to the air condition, yeah? What does the Shtar connect you to? What's the difference, one of the differences between a Milva with a Shtar without a Shtar? Hint, hint, hint. Where do you live? You live in a house or in a tent? You have a piece of land? Piece of land. Shtar afsa de ara. Shtar means that if you have a Shtar, and the star is good, you can automatically go and take the mortgage land, the Meshubad land to the star. Once I admit, or says Russia, I don't have to admit. <laughs> Once there's a star that says that I owe at least two, then what? Then those two are available for you in the form of land. Once I know that there's a star against me in Beisdin, and the star is good and proven, automatically my apartment, Chas Shalom, goes automatically to the one that I owe the money to. It's a halach. It's as if he gave him the land, the piece of land on the silver platter. So shtar equals halach. Oh, look. Bishmami no halach patu. Look at that. Only when he was nishbon three. When was nish? Excuse me. When he claimed three. And the third mona says Rashi is a kamil de balpe. The third mona, imagine yourself in your mind, the two is like the basic amount. Three, four, and five are like up to our discussion. If I admit it to three, that's like milva ba'al peh, meaning I admit to the third one, I could have gone home and not admit it. It's not written in the star. It's like a ba'al peh, it's like an oral agreement. Get me? Me meila, there's no karka over there, and that's called regular moedu mikzas. The shenken star is milva ba'al peh, yeah, and there the karka is connected in its halach. So you see, on three, he has to be niche, but it's moedu mikzas. On two, he does not nishba, because why? Because that's halach. Shtar is serving you on silver platter, the karka right now. The karka is yours. Go take the keys right this second, if you have the two. And that's why you don't have to take the shvua. On what? On two. 
Mashma, you see that Telach is Batu, and you don't have to take Yeshua on the other three. And that's absolutely against Rav Chia and pro Rav Sheshes. Boom, boom, question on Rav Chia. Yeah? Says the Gemara, Loi. No, 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 don't get excited. You're misreading, you're reading wrong the Brysa. When a person is moida to two, what do you mean moida? There's no other choice. Yeah? If he says two, because the star is indicating it, he would also be chayev shvua, because heilach is chayev shvua. No difference between two and three. This is heilach, this is not heilach. Who cares? <laughs> Rav Chia doesn't care. Rav Chia says you always have to take shvua. I, the Haidek Tani Sholosh. So why did the Bryce speak about three and not two? You know why? I'll tell you why. La Puki Medobi Akiva, too, because of Shimon ben Alozo wanted to exclude and argue on Rabbi Akiva. The Oma Meshav Aved Havi Upotu. Rabbi Akiva wanted to say, I have a Migo. Why did Rabbi Akiva want to say, I have Migo? Now I'm going to explain better, Bezos Hashem. Rabbi Akiva believes, in other words, all sides, by the way, Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Shimon Lozo do both believe if it's two, you have to take Shavua. Why? Eloch Shmelach, you have to take Shavua. When it's three, there's a question. Three, I'm being nice. I could have said two. Look how nice I am. I said three. Says Rabbi Kiva, you're so nice. You're an amigo guy. You're an amigo, amigo. And now what? Meshiv Avenda, you're potter. It's as if you returned a lost object. Yeah, because that third money, you wouldn't have gotten without your agreement. You're potter. That's Rabbi Akiva. Kamash Malan comes of Shimon Lazar to tell us, the moi de mikta satay navi v'chayev. Says of Shimon Lazar, no. I don't believe that this guy is really considered to be such a nice guy that out of his own goodwill, he chose to speak about three and not two, and he still has to really be Nishba. Says Toysus in the previous page, if you want to go back to the Toysus in the previous page, says Toysus, really, why? I'm reading Toysus now. Toysus is on here. Keep one finger on this page. And now let's go to Toysus in the previous page, which explains to us, really, why not, Migo? Why? The Chorab Kiva is right. Why is Rabshim Loza telling me I have a star that indicates two? Right. Now I said three. Say thank you and, 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 and close your, 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 your case. Says to us, Dim Toima, Yenaman Besholosh, the Migo de Bayamal Shtaim. Why is it to believe on the three? He could have said two. And don't make him make Shavua. Yesh Loima, Kemen de Helach Potu. Yeah, had he said two, what would be the case? <laughs> According to what we think now, Helach. Yeah, he's really potu. Okay, excuse me. No, 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 no. This is in the previous part of the sugya. I, I should have read that before. Sorry, I'm going one step backwards. When we saw the tale of his potu from Shvua, right? Then in Yoimer Shtaim, have a look for a coil. Then other maze. Louis Tzur, the person who would have said two, yeah? Lefida Havana, that really two is Helach, yeah? And you don't have to take Shvua then you're not being such a tzaddik. If you said two, you're saying it out of no choice because by heilach means you close the case of the two, done, finished, and the other three, you don't have to take shvu at all. It's a new case. It's koi for bakol. You deny all other case of the 50 became 100%. And that you can't say because ain't no domains. You couldn't have completely denied. If the star forces me to say two, it's not my choice. It's the star forces it. And really I'm denying everything else. If I deny everything else, ain't no maze. A person would never say to his balde, I owe you nothing, zero. That's too chutzpahdik. To admit only to two is like admitting zero. Two is like the basis before we even start the discussion. Two is, is a card against you, like two adium that force you to pay the two. It's not your own goodwill of Migo. Mimel, it's not called Migo. Why does Rabbi Kiva say no? Lo avi ozus. It's not called chutzpah. The Messiah le shtoro. Rabbi Kiva believes that the shtar proves him right, I could have said two, and the shtar would prove me to be right, that's not called being a chutzpah. It's not called being a chutzpah to me baldin. Let's continue now in the Gemara. Now let's continue to where we are. So now we are in the Ihochi. Ihochi b'shem alozo. Let's summarize the question so far. Let's summarize the question and the answer. Again, we are now standing where in Beisdin, and we have a shtar that's very ambiguous, but tends to say two. As you can see, Rabbi Kiva is more in favor of the star saying two. Rabbi Shimon Lazar, less. And therefore, says Rabbi Akiva, if I admit to the third money, I'm really nice. I'm a nice guy. I'm a Migo guy. And what? Get me out of the Shavuah. Very nice. Rabbi Shimon Lazar says no. No. The fact you say three 
you couldn't have said to him. Had you said to it, you were just forced by the star. It's not your goodwill. <laughs> That's just what you have no other choice. Now comes the Gemara and says, wait a second. What about if a person is nishba on the actual two? Forget about the three. What about if you would have said two, like the shtal? Would he have to take shvo? yes or no? So now we want to say, chinami, potu, and he would not have to take shvo. Yeah, Heinach is like a regular, excuse me. No, now we want to claim, sorry, sorry. We want to now answer. We're now in the answer of Rabbi Chia. Rabbi Chia said, if the person would have said two, like the star indicates, then Heilach does make a difference. He would still have to take Shavua. Whether it's two or three, I don't care. Two is Heilach. Three is regular Madhu Miksas. In all cases, he has to take Enachinami Shavua because Heilach is regular Madhu Miksas. You have to take Shavua. So says Rav Chia, the way we understand it now. The Gemara does not let Rav Chia sit on the laurels, not even one second. Break the Gemara, Yochi. If so, something in the text, the Nusach of the Bryce, it doesn't make sense. Rab Shimon Belozo Oimer, Hoil, since, listen to the words, Hoil, Void, Mixa Setaina, Yishova. What did Rab Shimon Belozo say? By three, you have to take Shvua since, oh, three, because it's three, and you are now admitting something new, more than the star, that's why you have to take a Shvua. According to you, Mashma, that two, you don't have to take Shvua, only three. If, if it would have been both two, and three that you have to take shvua, like you seem to indicate, he should have said, also three has to be nishba, also two and also three, like you want to tell me. The indication of the brisa sounds like only by three has to take shvua because it's a moed of miktas without helach. The third mona is not promising you the nice house over there. Only the two indicates that you have to take shvua. Why? Because or only three have to take shvua and two you don't. You don't have to take Shavuah on two. Why? Because Heilach, you don't take Shavuah. That's bad with, with, with Rav Chia. Ela, therefore now the Gemara comes to the final answer. Now come to the final answer, the final beautiful getting to the summit. And yet, nevertheless, the Heilach, Chayev. Wow, wow, wow. Really, usually, let's start the other way. Says Rav Chia, you're not facing me. Heilach is Chayev. Usually, when a person says, regular case, leave Shtar alone, regular Heilach, you owe me 100, and you say, Here, here's your 50, take your 50, go home. And the other 50 you deny, you still have to take Shavua. Heilach has to take Shavua. Yet, nevertheless, when it's two, when in this case there's a Shtar, and he admits it to two, not that he admitted, he's forced to admit to the two that are indicated in the Shtar, here he does not have to take Shavua. Why? Why not to take Shavua? We usually say, well, there's smoke, there's fire. There's a liar over here. Look, the star indicates at least two, which admits to uh, unwillingly, right? Why shouldn't you take Shavua on the rest? The other guy says there's five. Why do you let him go home all of a sudden? Answers more to answer. Answer number one, the shiny hocho. Here it's different. The kamesayal is because the star is on his side, which means usually we say the guy's a liar. If I come and say, you owe me 100, and you start fidgeting, moving around uncomfortably, uh, 50, hmm, that doesn't look good. Or even if you sound very confident, 50, so what? Lamaisa, there's something going on here. You're not out of the question, out of the story. Who says it's 50? Mm-hmm. Let's investigate more. Mm-hmm. One second. Can you please shut the microphone? Yeah, okay, one second. So now... Okay, the Seder, thank you. So now, okay. Now, however, sorry. Um, yeah. Which means over here, yeah, the Shtar supports his version. When he says two, and the Shtar very likely says two, we're not sure, but it's extremely likely a star missing a number is like two. So then he's very much believed. Get it? It's nothing to do with the Heilach, Shmelach, or Breilach. It's poshut, a good taina for the Moed Bemiktas. Usually when I say 50, it's because I don't want to be a liar. I'm a nice guy. I learn in Kolol, and I don't have money in the strap for cash. Remember the whole story. And I want to pay him later. I want to buy time. I play games. I can't lie through my teeth, right? 
So I'm not going to say zero. I can't say a hundred because why? A hundred I don't have. Zero I'm not saying because I'm not mechutza. Fifty is a very nice white lie. You know, I think <laughs> the, the English expression white lie, here it is. White lie. Here, it's not a white lie. Why? Because here really, when I say to, I'm very nicely endorsed by the shtal. That's why I don't have to take shnua. Take hell out of the story. It's nothing to do with it. Go to sleep. Inami, or alternative answer, why really, in the case of two indicated in the star, and he says two, he does not have to take shvua. It's a different reason. What did I tell you? Shtar is hand in hand, lock and key, hand in glove with karkois. A shtar is mishabed, mortgages karkois of the loive, the cart of the land of the loive. So, the enishboin al kfiras shibud karkois. And the rule is, the one does not take shvua over karka. I'm not going now to all the chorus and the reasons, but a karka, a piece of land, if I say you owe me karka, yeah, let's say rent or you stole or something, yeah, I claim you sit in my karka, therefore be nishba, let's have one aid. I have one aid that the guy sits in my land. Be nishba. No, in karka we don't say it. The psukim, whole sugya, the karka you don't take shvua. Here, funnily enough, he admits to the two of the karka, but he denies the other three, right? He denies that the star includes other three. If you deny part of the karka, meaning the other three that could be in the star, you also don't take shvua. So nothing to do the helach, nothing to do shmelach. Boshut, on karka, you don't take shvua. That's it. So let's summarize. Let's summarize. Nothing is confusing here. It's all very nice. Let's summarize. Again and again until we get it clear. The case is as follows according to the maskono. According to the maskono, two cases. Let's portray two cases. Case number one. A guy comes to present somebody with a star. Mister, you owe me star. And he says, you owe me five. And he says, no, I owe you two. He does not have to take shvua. Why not? He's going to be mixed us. Even I know the two is part of five. Look, right? So why doesn't he have to take shvua on the two? Leave Elach out of the story. Who needs Elach? There are two reasons, according to Rav Chia, of course. Why doesn't he have to take shvua if he admits it to two? It's a partial oido. Either because the star is on his side. So it sounds very credible. The star saying nothing is like saying two. Get yeah, right? Now Rabbi Shimon Lozer joined Rabbi Akiva in this stage of the sugya. That's where I got confused before. Now Rabbi Shimon Lozer agrees to Rabbi Akiva that it's a nice indication, star that's missing a, a digit, a number, is like two. It's like saying two. So I'm endorsed by the star. Second reason, I don't have to take shua because it's land. Because Lamais, star ahoy, star ahin, star ahir, star is all about karka. That's what Shtar is coming to do, to mortgage your karka. I have my eyes on this beautiful land. I want to go with my children to a summer vacation <laughs> in a nice house. So the Mimela, that's the indication. That's a story. I don't have to take Shvo over karka. That's it. Good. Second case. And everyone agrees to that. Rabbi Kiva and from Lozor. Second case, what if he said three? What if he said three? Yeah? Now, oh, let's say he said three. Says, says Rabbi Akiva. I'm starting with Rabbi Akiva. No. If he said three, is Potter still Potter from Shvua? Why? Not because the star endorses him, actually doesn't. But three, he could have said two, right? And it would be very nicely endorsed by the star, right? And he wouldn't be called the Mechutzaf because he would have been what? Endorsed by a star. Look, I'm so honest. I'm paying more than the minimum that I should have. I'm Mr. Honest. Recommend me to become the next Mr. Salanter. So Mimela, don't have to take Shvua, says Rabbi Akiva. Says Rabbi Shimon Lozo, no. Although I believe two would have been credible, but if you say three, had you said two, it's not because of your choice because you're a nice guy. It says it says over here, look, in the second thesis, that's a far I didn't tell you before, it's even stronger than before. It says Rabbi Shimon Lozo, there's no migo. You know why? I'll tell you why. If you would have said two, it wouldn't be your own goodwill, your honesty. Two, you'd be forced to say two. Yeah, the fact you would have said two because you have no other choice. You can't go below two. I'll give you an example. Let's say there's an organization who runs its DOCA event and they say minimum donation, minimum of donation to go into the event and watch the beautiful singer and show and the Rob speaking is 17 shekel and 20 agorot, okay? Some people give 50, some 100. A guy comes in, yeah, and he gives with a grim face 
17 and 20 agorot. Yeah, you can see very well, this guy would have loved to give how much? Zero. <laughs> He's forced without 17 and 20. He, he would have, that's the story here, says Bishim Lozer. Had I said two, it's not because you really would have been honest, because you have no choice, because you can't go below two. That's not called Migo. Get it? You're not showing honesty here. The man of you are just a regular mother mixed with honey, and therefore the three you admitted, that three, oh, you now have to be niched on the other two that he claimed. Beautiful, no, easy. That's Ad Kanakofa Aleph. So again, let's summarize again, very good. Again, according, what happened if you said three? The star indicates possibly two, well, not less than that. And the guy, the Toivet says how much? Five. The plaintiff says five. And Mr. Nitba, the accused, says how much? Three. Oh, says Rabbi Kiva Migo. I could have said, Shar means to go home. I said three, say thank you, and close your case and your mouth and go home. I'm not Nishba to you. That's Rabbi Kiva. Says Rabbi Shimon Lazo, no, that's not called Migo, my friend. Says Toisfus, explaining Rabbi Shimon Lazo, the second Toisfus, you can see it later, that's not called Migo. The third mona, you, is, is not shtal, is not, is your own oido. You might have mixed us. You could have said two. No, you would be forced to say two. That's not called bigo. It looks like you'd like to say zero. <laughs> yeah, you have no choice. That's the good old, vital. Let's get, okay. What's uh, what's the question? No, what? Because star, is, there's the kosher star. Right. Okay, but had you said two, it would be out of your own goodwill. <laughs> You'd be forced to say two. Are you paying taxes or I don't know, whatever you do uh, because you're happy? You have to. The person has to do that. He has no other choice. If he's not three, two is forced. So the fact he said three, yeah, is not, it's not I could have done less. Yeah, it, it doesn't show nemonus. It doesn't show yashras. Yeah, so you say three and we, we're choshesh, maybe there's more. In other words, two would be like koi for bakoil. Two would be like, like saying nothing. Yeah, Mimela, you, you, you never have. Well, let me ask you a question, Jeff. Why don't we say, as we said at the very beginning of the story, it's a good chazara. I'm going back to the very, very basics. Yeah, I'll ask you a question, which the Gemara indicates a few uh, to Amudim ago. We said, why isn't everybody who makes a smigo? Tell me. Yeah, you say 100, I say 50 to Ellen, and what? And I believe, why am I not believed? Why taking Shua? I could have said zero. Why can't you couldn't have said zero? Hmm? Right? I could have said zero to my Balchoy. I admit you, my Balchov, now. I can't say zero to the person who's so nice to me and stands in front of me, right? Okay? Same thing here, too. Two here is like zero. It's the bottom line. There is no below two. So saying I would have said two is like I would have said zero, which you can't. You'd be forced to say that. You'd really love to say zero, and you can't. Two is, is, is there's no bottom line lower than that. Because the star that says, I owe you money, I'm saying on purpose, on mistake, Two coins at least means two. So you couldn't have said otherwise. Mimela, that's not called Migo. That's not called Migo. But Rabbi Kiva says otherwise. Rabbi Kiva says it is called Migo because, because then Chinami, I would have been uh, helped by the star. Yeah? Right. Yeah. Ellen said a very nice thing. It's a questionable Migo. It's a tarnished Migo. It's a maybe Migo. Rabbi Kiva believes in it. And Rabbi Lazar doesn't bite her. Now comes the other way. Some people ask the other way. Some people attack Reb Sheshes from the end of the Brisa. What we're going to see now is the perfect opposite mirror image of what we've seen up until now. We're basically going to repeat everything, but just the other way around, from back to forth, back to, to start. Some people question who? Reb Sheshes, who said what? Helach. Helach, he said, Helach Potur, right? Of Shesha Zelach Potur, me safer from the safer. What did the safer say? Rabbi Kiva Oimer, Ain Ola Kemesha Veda, Upotu, says Rabbi Kiva, when the guy says, I owe you three, he's such a nice guy, he could have said two and go home. He said three, says Potu. Time Adomo Sholosh. Now we're Medayek, we're extracting from there, only because he said three, he's Potur. Ashtaim, Chayev, right? Mashma. That two, had he been going down to the minimum allowed amount of two, indicated by the star, he would be chayev shvua 
according to Rabbi Akiva. Oh, what is the star? In the Havamina, star is Helach. The star, Kevin de Kamoy Dibe, a star that he is forced to admit is Kehelach Dami. Why is it Helach? The star has a little candy inside. You know it's a candy? It's called a nice apartment. Hmm. And it's available for you right now. Yeah, Amazon.com. Yeah, star.com. In the star, once you admit the star of what of two, yeah, then that star already carries with it an available, immediately available karka. Take the karka. That's called helach. There you are, helach. And what? Shmamina helach chayev. Because Rabbi Akiva only said it by Migo, your potter, when you go above and beyond, such a nice guy. Instead of here, you added three, what it's sadik, you don't take a shua. Mashma by two, you do take shua. Why do you take shua? It's helach. Ah, you see that helach, you do take shua against Rav Sheshes and pro Rav Chia. Boom, 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 question mark. And says Gemara, loy, loy lamei melech shtayim nami potu. No, no, no. Maybe enich nami, similar to before. Maybe Enoch Nami, Rabbi Akiva, would pattern, would exempt both three and two. Both cases, three because of Migu, and two because of Helach. Two different reasons. I by the Kani So why did he stick to three? Why didn't he speak about two? Because he has his own machloikas against Rabbi Shimon Lazar, yes or no Migu. The Omer Moed Miksa Satay Nehavi V'chayim. Rabbi Shimon Lazar, my colleague, says Rabbi Akiva, believes it's a regular Moed Miksa and he's Chayim Shvua. Says Rabbi Akiva that really what is Potur because it's a Meshav Aveda, which is a form of Migum. In other words, our, our fighting arena, we fight in the arena of what? Of three. Do we say Migum yes or no? When it comes to two, we just didn't mention it. We just didn't mention it. But of course, says Rav Sheshus, because two is Helach, then Avada on Helach according to Rav Sheshus, you're Potur. No question. It just wasn't discussed. That's all. Because it's not a Machlaikas. That's why we don't talk about it. It's not disputable. And Achinami Mistamra. And I'm telling you also that it makes a lot of sense to say that. In other words, it makes a lot of sense to say that by two, he should really be Potur from Shvua like Helach. Now says the something very witty. Let's imagine that if the guy would have said two, he would be Chayev Shvua like a regular Modu Mikzas, yeah. Then, how can Rabbi Kiva say the three is Migo? What, is, what does Migo mean? I could have said a better time, right? I could have said something better. Hi, Yerumi Kamarim. You know why the person chose to speak about three? Because if you tell me two does not require Shvua and three does require Shvua, right? Then, so far, the person would be Marim, would actually play a trick on us and would have said, Yamina Shtaim. Had I said I only owe two, ba'ina is tabui. It's true, I would have to pay less, but I would have to take shvua. People are scared of shvua. Ema sholosh, let me say three, let me use the migo, and then the avikimation of Veda potter. Get it? Let me explain. That's Rabbi Akiva. In other words, we're questioning like this. Let, let me repeat everything. Rabbi Akiva said one thing for sure. Three is a kimesh of Veda, you are potter. What about two? Hmm. Two, which is Helach, Chayv Potter. Says Rav Sheshes, of course, two would, yes, be Enachinami, two would be Chayv Shvua, yeah? Because, yeah, two would be Potter from Shvua, excuse me. Two is Helach, and Helach, yeah, a second, says the, the, um, the two would be, obviously, Chayv Shvua. Two would be Chayv Shvua. Helach is Chayv Shvua, according to Rav Sheshes. How do we know that? Because only now we have a good Migo. Says the guy like this. If really three, yeah, you say you, you're admitting to three, had you said two, which you claim, I'm such a tzaddik, I could have claimed two. What would be the case? If two would be Chayev Shvua, that's not called Migo. You know why? Because people prefer losing money and not taking Shvua. You'd prefer to say what? Three and get away with it without Shvua rather than saying two and be chayv shvua. Your backdoor taina, your backstage taina, you could have said, your migo taina, your good amigo, is not such a good amigo. Why? Because two would be mechayv yushvua. In mechayv shvua, that's not called migo. You're being sly with us. You know about migo, you know too much. And three, you choose to say three to be potro meshvua. And therefore, if Rabbi Kiva still says it's migo, then, or meshiva veda, then what? Must be the two 
is also potter mishvua, then of course it's a good taina. Both three and two shvua, I'm not chayiv. Like who? Like really? Like Rav Sheshis? There, yeah, really I am potter. Yeah, I am potter mishvua on both. And therefore, no. Oh, I'm getting confused now. So really, again, 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 again. Yeah, I mean, I would have been potter. Yeah, I yeah, I would have been potter if I would say to I would be potter. That's not so good, a good migo. Elamai, sorry, the fear of sheshes is chayev behelach. Is chayev behelach, and he says I would have been saying to and be chayev to Yeshua, right? That's why I'm a good. I'm a good guy. Had I said to, I'd be chayev Shvua. No, 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 no. I have to re-record it. I have to re-record this part. Sorry, I, I apologize to the listeners. I'm getting confused. You know, let's restart. Let's restart from, let's restart from, 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 from Ika the Moisiv Misefa. Apologies to everybody. I'm restarting from Ika the Moisiv Misefa. Some people Moisiv from the Seifa go back to the line Karkois, right? The two Karkois, one on top of the other. Let's go to the second Karkois. Ika the Moisiv Misefa. Some people ask from the Seifa from the end of the Brisa and they attack Rav Sheshis. What did Rav Sheshis say? Rav Sheshis says that Helach is Potu, right? Rav Sheshis says we have two cases, but it's divided to two. Helach is Potu, okay? So Rav Sheshis Nuchoyro, in the case of a Shtar, Shtar being Helach, Rav Sheshis is supposed to be saying, you Potu, you Potu from, from a Shvua. Why? Rav Sheshis says, you admit it on one, and here it is on a silver platter, and the rest, what about the rest? The other is a new Taina, and you Potu on the Taina. Very good. Now, yes, two and three. Some people attack Rav Sheshis from the Seifa. What did the Seifa say? Rabbi Akiva Oimer, Eino Elak a Meshav Aveda, U Potur. Rabbi Akiva says he's just a Meshav Aveda when he claimed three and he's Potur, similar to Migo. All very nice. Time ado, Mal Sholosh. Only because he said Sholosh and it's a, a number higher than what he's forced to say. He's such a nice guy, good guy. Ashtayim, Chayev. Mashma, had he just gone with the minimum of the star, and he's not a Meshiva Veda, he's forced to say to, he's Chayev to take a Shvua. Why is he Chayev to take Shvua? That star, look, star, Keva and the Kamoidi Bey, Keilach Dami, right? Star, once you admit or you're forced to admit, then it's Heilach, because star in the, includes in it Karka. Once you admit to the star, a Karka is served on silver platter right away, and it's Heilach, and Shmamina Heilach Chayev, boom. Against Rav Sheshis. You see the star is Mikhail you even though it's Helach, but Rav Sheshis said the Telach is Batu. Question. That's a question of Rav Sheshis. Good. Answer Rav Sheshis, Loi. No, 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 no. Loi la memelach shtayim nami Potu. No. Two is also Potu. Three is Potter because of Meshua Veda. And two is Potu. You know why? Because simply it is a Helach. And Helach is Potu. I buy the Khani Sholosh. So why did they talk about three and not two? Because by three, they're fighting over Meshav Aveda, yes or no. La Puki, Medob Shem Lazo, Rabbi Kiva wanted to exclude and, 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 and argue with Rabbi Shem Lazo, that's all. Rabbi Shem Lazo says, is Chayev, meaning it's not a Migo, not a Meshav Aveda. Kamash Ma, the Meshav Aveda, Abad, you potu. Says Rabbi Kiva, it's a Migo and his potu. So far, so good. And so far, I didn't even get confused the first time. Here comes the part that I got confused and I have to repeat. Hachinami mistabla comes the Gemara and proves to you that it makes sense to say davka, yes, like Rav Sheshis, that says what? That the Elach is potu. Elach is potu. Why? This time chayev. If you think that Elach is chayev, and if you would say two, like the star, it would be chayev shvua, like you, or Abhiya, the sholo shechipoto abekiva. How can he part by three saying, what a good guy, what a meagle guy, what a Meshav Aveda, that's not true to be pointer. Why? Now, I, Baruch Hashem. Hi, Yerumi Kamarim. The guy is a very sly guy. Sova, he thinks, Iyamina Shtaim Baina Ishtabui. Had I said only two, I would have to take Shvua. So even though I'm saying a lesser number, lesser number would Shvua with strings, disgusting strings attached of Shvua. Nobody wants to do that. So your back taina, your better taina is not so better. Why? Because you would have to take shvua on that. 
Amoshalosh, I prefer saying three and losing more money. I prefer paying more and, and being potter from Shvua. That's good. Must be that your backstage taina, the taina that's the card you could have pulled and you didn't, it's a good taina that's less money and no Shvua. So I am right, says Rav Sheshit Baruch Hashem. I am right that really Helach is potter mi Shvua. And that's a good nigo. Again, three, I'm saying three and I'm potter. And two, by backstage possible potential taina, which I'm not saying would be less money, and no Shavua. What a trophy, what a beautiful thing. But if you attack me, Rav Sheshes, then no. If really you want to tell me, Helech is chayev, like you, Rav Chia, like regular Moedim um, Miktas, that's not a good migo. It's not a good migo, right? Why is it a good migo? Because taina, you're saying, I'm saying three, what a tzaddik, I could have said two, no. I could have said two, I'm so nice, no. Had you said to you, you don't want to do that. You prefer paying, uh, 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 yeah? You prefer getting with, with, yeah? Paying more three and no shvua than paying less. And yes, shvua of two. So that's difficult for Rabchia. Uh, now that bomb of a bombshell of a taina is now against Rabchia. What did Rabchia say? Rabchia says the two. What about two? And Chinami, he wants to say, hey, lach is chayv shvua. And here it sounds like we just proved we know with magic and miracles the two should be potter mishvua. Says Rabchia, no, shiny awesome. I agree with you that regularly, Enochinami, Enochinami, usually I still stand by what I say. Heilach, Enochinami, Heilach, according to Rabchia, is still chayv shvua, regular mod mixer. Shiny awesome, like we said before, the kamesea lishtoro. At the end of the day, in spite of all those tainas of of, um, of Rav Sheshes, Lamaisa, if the person says to Enchinami over there, it really happens to be believed without Shavua, you write that the star, in the case of star, you prove to me with miracles beautiful, that star, you'd be potu, and therefore it's a good nigger for Bikiva. Of course, because with the case of star, the star endorses the person. I say to the star also says to almost, that's why I believe, but that's not an indication on all over Helech in other places. A regular Helech without star, you still have to be Nishba. I agree with all that magic that you proved was regarding where? Regarding the star kind of Helech. That star Helech is different to all other Helechs, which is really what Rav said before. That's a different Zach. Yeah? That Helech with Shtar, Shtar endorses you. About that you're believed. Regular Helech, which is Balpe, just empty talk, you're not believed. 150, don't start fidgeting here. Take Shvua. Inami, alternatively. Very nice. Alternatively, as we said before, leave me alone. When it comes to Karka, it's a different story. Because Shtar is involved in Karka both ways, the Hoido and the Kfira, just like if I deny the Karka and I say, no, it's not my house, it's not your house, it's my house. I don't care about your Ed Echod that you came against me, you brought against me. Karka is, does not require Kfira. Kfira's Karka <coughs> does not require Shvua. So to Hoido's Karka, when I admit to part of the Shtar, which is part of the Karka, I'm also Potter Mishvua. But that's only here. But regularly, Heilach is Chai Shvua according to Rabbiya. Sorry for the mistake, hope you forgive me. And now we will not continue. It's 1025. We're stopping here by Mesa Malzuta. By the halacha is a machlokis. Machlokis rishonim. Maybe we'll see more tomorrow. Machlokis rishonim whether halach is chayv or potur. The halacha lemaisa. Do we pass on from here of sheshes? Is a machlokas rishonim. Thank you very much. Atzlocha. Have a great day and very, very, very good uh, learning. Toyrem.